Hello there, um, welcome to this week's session. We're going to look specifically today at, first of all, the kind of introduction as to why you want to use qualitative software, any qualitative software, um, for a systematic or literature review. Um, and then we're going to go through a kind of practical workshop of um, a little example I've set up. I just wanted to start by going over some of the, what would be the advantages to using uh, CACDAS software, QDA software, that's computer-assisted qualitative data analysis software for doing a literature or systematic review. Why would you want to do that as opposed to using a reference manager or something like that? Essentially, it allows you to keep a database of literature. So in the same way as you would with the reference manager, you've got one place which keeps all of your literature in one place. Um, and that helps you uh, quickly find a specific paper you're looking for um, and also means that you've just got one place to kind of keep all of your full text of, of your literature. And of course, this is essentially qualitative research that, that you're doing when doing a literature or systematic review. You're examining a source of text qualitatively, um, deciding what it's about, which bits are relevant to you, um, very common actions for doing qualitative analysis. So any software which is geared up for doing qualitative analysis usually works pretty well um, to do literature reviews. And all the advantages that these kind of software has for working with qualitative text applies for uh, journal articles or gray literature or whatever you're using here. So you can easily find relevant sections across many articles once you've been through and, and coded that um, those, those sources of literature. And it can also help with the references. If you format it in the right way, produce reports that include the uh, references cited in, in the format that you want to use for your publication. And the advantage of setting up a database like this, you can also use it across projects. So most of the time researchers will work on fairly similar topics and a lot of the literature that they'll work on between one paper and another within a project is very similar. And even across projects, for example, if you're working in a particular area of participatory research, for example, you're likely to use the same references over and over again. So by investing the time to start up a database of your literature, you can actually save yourself time um, across all the projects and stop reinventing the wheels every time you want to look for a particular quote to support something you were trying to say, or even just to find a particular article it can be a lot quicker to do with your own specific database. It can also help by letting you integrate research data with your literature. So for example, you can bring in um, a particular article which has got a particular result or expounds a particular theory and then actually um, code that in the same way that you code your data. So you can create connections between bits of your data that support or even contradict published literature. And that's a very useful way to um, keep yourself kind of theoretically grounded, I suppose, but also when it comes to writing up an article, um, very specifically refer to particular issues that you've found. Now you can also, as I mentioned earlier, include the full text of sources in the project file. Um, and that's really helpful because it can keep all of your data in one place. It means you don't have to go traipsing through trying to find a particular article. Um, and when you've got that, it's very quick to search through them for particular keywords or even particular references. So if you look for um, Smith 2015, uh, you can find every paper which references Smith 2015 by just putting that particular string of words in there. And the flexibility in this kind of software allow you lots of different ways to sort your literature. So maybe even ways like literature I agree with or literature I don't agree with. Um, you can set up any kind of category and then look to see kind of comparatives between those different categorizations. Um, and you can also, of course, keep comments and memos um, on your project um, and on particular articles. So you can write yourself little little notes about um, a source and, and whether you think it's uh, credible or not. Well, you can also share that with your collaborators. Um, so if you've got other people who are writing a paper with you, you can um, very easily share with them all of the um, references which you want to use, all of the literature you found that's relevant, and they can add literature as well. So you can have a kind of much more collaborative way of finding um, different things. And if you're doing a systematic review, of course, um, then this kind of can help um, if you've got, for example, two people doing 
a, a systematic review and you're doing kind of comparative to make sure you know you, you're finding the same literature over and over again and then it's also very quick to find quotes when you come to writing up so when you know that you've got um, a particular thing you want to say in your paper and you know someone's written about that somewhere that where is that there is that quote it's much easier to find it if you've that something you've tagged as a quote you know you're going to use in the future when you are reading through and analyzing that um, source. Cacti software can be a lot better at allowing you access to the full text and including the full text, but it also allows you to have much more nuanced thematic extraction. So you can tag particular um, quotes rather than just the whole reference, the whole article, you can tag specific sections which are relevant to you. So you start being able to kind of cut across all of your literature and just pull out the things that are interesting to you at the time. With that in mind as a, as a rationale for what we're going to try and do, I'm actually just going to show you now um, how this would work in practice uh, using Quercos. But much of this fundamental stuff will work for whatever um, piece of qualitative analysis software you're, you're doing. Um, and I think the key thing to bear in mind when I'm showing you the example of how I've chosen to do this for a little example project is that these packages are very flexible and they can be made to work in whatever way works best for you. So with that caveat, I'm just going to switch straight to Quercos here um, and show you a very simple example. I've just pulled out maybe three or four different sources that I've brought in here. Okay, we've got four sources. Um, I've not done very much coding on them here, but I will show you um, how we'll bring in a file um, and then how we'd go around uh, describing that. But what I would do is go through and say, okay, this is about results. And on the left, I've got my bubbles here, which represent the themes. And I can drag and drop this section of text onto results. And so now I've extracted a particular sentence or paragraph from that article, um, which is specifically about the results. So when I want to go through later and just see one particular theme, which I've extracted, but for example, this theme about community, what the community means in this literature. I've got quite a few things from different sources here. So here's something from uh, Hyatt 2014. Here's something from Burgold and Thomas. And so we can look across all of the different um, sources that we've put into the project, extract everything, and read them together. So we can see how these different responses um, differ, how they're similar. Um, and we've got these quotes, which we can very easily copy with these buttons here and put straight into um, Word or, or wherever we're writing up our report. Clicking on the home button takes us back here. Obviously what you want to do here is there may be certain themes which are going to be um, relevant to all literature searches, uh, all systematic reviews. You'll probably want to talk about um, different theories which are people are using, different methodologies, um, the results and conclusions, so those might have their own theme, their own bubble. Things like contradictions will probably be quite a good one, um, or consensus maybe. Um, and then I always tend to have one which is kind of called discourse, which um, I find there's kind of this kind of meter level of um, what everybody is saying. Um, you know, a lot of these articles will start saying well, the commonly held belief in this area is that x equals y. That's a kind of, when people are talking about the field themselves, um, often that's very interesting uh, to pull out because it's something that you probably directly challenge or support in your research project. Um, and then I always tend to have a, a bubble for key quotes. And whenever I'm reading an article, um, sometimes you'll come across something and you'll say, oh, that's perfect. That's exactly how I would describe this issue, uh, this problem. And I know that that's going to be a quote that I end up um, using directly in, in a, an article or a research paper or something I'm writing up. I'll, I'll tag them as what they're about as well. So this is about methods and this one is about uh, participatory methods. Um, but the, by having one category for key quotes, then I can quickly go through and find those the, um, the real cream of the crop, if, as it were. And that's basically the the main approach and the main functionality that you'd have if you're doing a systematic review or a literature review in qualitative analysis software. 
It allows you to pull out those quotes, those little snippets, quickly sort them, quickly find them, and read them all together across the different articles um, and see what's interesting, what's different there. Now, the software itself won't automatically help you with searching for the literature or finding the literature. So it's very much a stage of once you've done that using um, online sources or your library search or whatever your technique is, especially if you're doing systematic review, this is where you then take those results, take the text of those results, and then start analyzing them. But having said that, there are also ways in which you can explore your results. If I click on this button here, which shows us the source properties now in Quercos, this is how we describe the, the different articles in this case that we've brought in. I've put in a title for each one, which is basically the kind of uh, the abbreviated title, how you'd reference it in a page. Um, just Kristen's 2006, so it's just the author in the year, because um, it's a very kind of quick way to remember what this particular article is. You could, of course, put the full title in there if you wanted to. I've got the title here as a separate property. Uh, so this one here is Tyranny, Strict Transformation, Power and Paradox in Participatory Development. I think this is actually a book review, this one. So I could also have a category here for uh, book review. We'll say this. Yes, this one's book review. And so we've described this as being a book review. Um, and so we can describe them in any kind of way. So uh, you could have binary categories that are yes, no, like book review, yes, no. Or you could have something which is more general, like type of source. And you could say this is a published article. Um, or you could put in something else here, like, for example, grey literature. Or it might be a newspaper article or something like that. Um, and so by doing that, you're obviously telling the computer that this source belongs to that category. And then later, it's very easy to bring up the results just from that category. So you can do comparisons between, for example, what uh, the media might say on something as compared to what the published literature says. Um, and then the other ones that I've got here are probably fairly standard and got different categories here for the year, just in case we wanted to see, for example, how they change over time. We've got uh, the journal here. Um, so if we want to see if there's a particular theme or a particular bias in a particular journal, we could do that. We've got the volume here so we can reference it properly and the authors. And I just want to quickly mention how in this project, I've done the um, authors. Now you see here that um, this little infinity symbol here shows that this is a multiple choice category. So we can actually have multiple authors in here. Um, and just by clicking on here, we can put in, and these are all of the different ones which I've already put into the project. And the advantage of doing it this way is obviously the modularity of that. So you have a category for each of these different authors. And if you want to see everything that's written by Kristins or Spear, um, then again, you could, that's something that you can look at in the future. Now, I've also formatted this in a slightly strange way, in the kind of way that you would do uh, when doing, uh, for example, like Harvard referencing system. And that means that when I go to do the report or actually uh, pull out the quote, copy the quote from this, the authors, and in fact, hopefully the, the whole reference will come out in the right format that I want to use. So, and I'll very quickly show you um, how you can use the query view here to look specifically for things from particular authors, for example. So we click on the query view here, and then all the properties we've assigned to the different sources are available here. So for example, we could do year, and we could see here are the results of everything that was written in 2015. But we can also put in um, ranges and things like that as well. So we could put in everything that was uh, before or after a particular year. And by adding different things uh, like this, we can actually um, we can actually do uh, a date range. And you can also do this, for example, for authors. And now we're seeing the results from papers written by Bergwald. And you can obviously refine that as well. So if we add another property here, where authors equals Bergold and authors equals uh, Thomas. And we've seen that they've written a paper together there. Now we can actually see um, these are the papers which were written by those two authors together. And so that might be interesting for us. I'm just going to go back a little bit now and just show you what the process would be to bring in a source um, and to um, describe it in the right kind of way for the software. So here's another paper which is on a similar topic. And this paper is by Brian Christens, who 
is already in my database. And I've got options here from this journal of full text as HTML or a PDF file. Now, if you choose the HTML file, that means that you read it basically in the browser. If you wanted to do to bring that in from here, all you need to do is select the, the text or use Control A on your keyboard to copy all of the text and then bring that into Quercos. Now, it's actually probably easier to do it um, using the PDF since Quercos now supports PDF files. So if I click on the PDF button there, so now wherever I've saved that, all I need to do is go into Quercos, click on the bottom right here for the Add Source button, and then, so if I was going to copy and paste that from the HTML, I would use Import Source from Clipboard, but otherwise I'm going to use Import Source Select a File. And now I'm going to go to the, I think I went to the Downloads folder. Yeah, that looks right. It actually gives you a little preview here to see that that is the right one. And I can change the source title here. I'll call this Kristen's et al. 2008. Now we've got that source taken from the PDF and there's the whole text. Now we actually need to describe the, the context of it and who's in there. And I'm actually just going to copy and paste from that PDF the values here. So for title, and copy and paste title over there, or type it out manually. Now the year was 2008, so I'll just click new value 2008. Journal, that was Forum for Qualitative Social Research, so I already have that in there. And now we come to the authors. So I'm just going to enter these basically in order so that they are in the order which they are uh, referred to and referenced to. Type of source here, I can choose published article. So you can see here, that there's a little bit of data entry required when you bring this in. It is possible in Quercast to bring in data from a spreadsheet. So if you have been using something like a reference manager and could export uh, spreadsheet-based data, you can automatically bring in these source properties. So I'm all done with my source properties here. So I'll close this new article that we've put in here. And now it's just a case of reading through this new source and pulling out some things so that's about communities. I'll add that to community. It's also a nice quote, so maybe I'll add that to my key quotes there. Some of the other more kind of podcast specific things that we can do here, we've actually got participatory methods and action research. I've just clustered by putting these together, but I can actually make these um, actually subcategories of methods so I can say that action research and participatory methods are different methods and then when I double click on the parent I can now see everything that I've got as participatory method um, and action research okay. and of course with Quercast you get this um, the size of the bubbles shows you how many uh, extracts you've added to each of those nodes so I can see that I, most of the stuff that I pulled out at the moment is about this community theme. And obviously the other thing which Quercos does is this uh, cluster view. So looking to see, we've coded something the same way twice to see whether there are connections between any of these themes. So if I actually now right click on community and look at the overlap view, but for example, I can see that um, key quotes are the most thing I have connected with communities. So that's essentially how that would work. Now, of course, the other advantage to doing using a software package like this is you obviously get um, keyword analysis. Um, so let's have a look. We can put in uh, case studies, um, and then it will show us on the right here all the different times in those articles where the phrase uh, case studies was used. Um, so here we can see that sounds great. So I'm going to put that as being about case studies. I'm also going to add that to key quotes because actually I like that so much. And you can also choose to refine the search criteria. So you may want to see results that you've already coded to a particular bubble, or you may want to just look to see what a particular author had said. So there's lots of different ways in which the software can make this process quicker and easier to kind of sort and, and keep all of your different sources together. Um, and then when it comes to sharing that or, or bringing that into someone else, I'm just going to generate a little report here. So we've got some uh, properties here, of the whole source um, of all the sources in the pro project. So for example, we can see the length and how many quotes we've done in a particular source. And this is interesting. So 80% of our articles come from this one journal. And we've got these canvas views here we can export. Um, and then here's the actual text itself. So here's everything that we've said is about community. We've actually got the text of the quote here um, and the source that it came from. But if we go down here, we can actually 
click on this include properties in quotes so on the right side of the screen we have all the options to customize how the report looks um, and we'll select all of those so so we've got here the key things that we need to have so year and volume and things like that now the method the the way in which Quercos does the layout doesn't mean at the moment unfortunately that you can copy and paste directly into a standard kind of Harvard or Chicago formatting format but it's not too hard to take the uh, the data here and then format that specifically in the way you need it for whatever your journal your um, or your institution wants you to to reference that um, and then when you when you're happy with this you can obviously copy and paste directly from here um, and but you can also uh, save as a PDF or HTML file so at the end of that you'll get quite a nice summary here we go here's a pdf of our report um, so that's pretty much everything i was going to go over at this stage um, a very brief example as to why cactus can be useful for doing systematic reviews and literature reviews it'll be really interesting let us know in the comments below when this is up on youtube if there's any other tips you have any other ways you'd like to work with the data um, and if you've got any questions, obviously, at any time, uh, do let me know. Look forward to hearing your feedback.